Hi, my name is Adam and welcome to WebWalks, a video show where I talk about online privacy, security and web design. Today I'd like to talk about browser fingerprinting, all the methods that can be used to target you on your device using the features in your browser and some of them can even be made uh, in the incognito mode or private mode and I'll go into detail about each one of them tell you what you can do about it to prevent it or if there is a prevention and how ad companies actually bypass the prevention to actually get the info to target you for the ad or something so let's start about it. I have a little note here to not lose myself in the talk so let's start okay uh, IP address whenever you make a request for a website your browser makes HTTP request and in the header the, the very first information the web server gets from your computer is the header of the request and in the header there is IP your IP um, what they can do about it that, well they can they can get the country you're from and probably your city and your provider could be could be a provider depends on where you are, if you use your company computer, they can get a different idea. Or if you use your mobile phone and your provider's internet to access this, access the server, they will probably get your your mobile phone internet provider's IP. Well, uh, what you can do about it? Uh, you can hide yourself behind a proxy server, or use the VPN, virtual private network. VPNs are paid options because what's happening is that someone else actually is, is giving away his connection for people and masks their their uh, their services with his IP address uh, so if you use a proxy or VPN or Tor the Onion routing network you can hide your real IP address but there is this thing in your browser called WebRTC, short for real-time communication, which is a cool new thing, a module, let's say, for using a lot of uh, modern stuff to use the, your browser to somehow uh, make it make the site behave more interactive. So, WebRTC is support for uh, microphone web camera, all the other cool sh cool stuff <laughs> you have in your browser. But the thing that most people don't know about WebRTC is that actually it leaks your IP address. It leaks your public and local IP address. It has the power to do so. So even if you are behind a VPN, WebRTC can give your IP information to the server. What you can do about it, you can turn off the WebRTC in your browser. I always recommend Firefox or Firefox clones, where you can go to about config page and quickly search for RTC and turn it off. Uh, usually uh, about a lot of preventions I'm going to talk about, some of them might break the site, you know, because they will kill some components that the site uses to track you which also is used by the site to, let's say, show some cool animation or show some nice pop-up or whatever. But if you, if you turn off the WebRTC in a browser, nothing would change really. It's, it's just a cool thing, okay? So, next thing, navigator object. <clears throat> uh, if you use any modern browser and you use the default setting, or you don't have any JavaScript blocking plugins, or you're not tech savvy, chances are you most likely have JavaScript turned on. JavaScript is the thing that actually makes the web work in some sense. And JavaScript can access this navigator object in the document object model, which can reveal a lot of information about the browser itself. Uh, Navigator objects can contain information about your screen size, 
what system you use, what the version of this operating system you use, what browser, what the version of the browser you use, um, what is there, yeah, what language you use the browser in, and lots of other stuff. But it's really just numbers, you know? The, the server can't see you know, Adam, his screen size is something, something. Only if you put there the information that you are the Adam, and then they will know that your screen size is this, you use Macintosh, you use Safari or whatever. But if you don't reveal the information about you, they just can get from the navigator objects all, only the data, uh, technical data of the browser, let's say. What you can do here, uh, you can turn off JavaScript, but almost every site will break down. It won't work, even though it might not be necessary every time to use JavaScript. You can use uh, add-ons, you know, extensions for your browser, to block JavaScript per site, or even per component of the site. So you can have the extensions like umetrics or no script, or even ublock origin has this has this option. And you can open the menu and select which part or which service the page you are at should make a request from. You know? So imagine you are at the times.com website reading for an article. They might use Google Fonts to make the fonts nice. But if you don't want to, you don't want to get Google Fonts to be downloaded and display the page in for some reason. Could be that you are afraid of Google tracking or whatever. You can open the menu of this blocking add-on and turn off this specific snippet that calls for the Google Fonts. Okay. Um, but you can uh, yeah also uh, navigator objects gets part of the data from the user agent. User agent is uh, quite a long string of data, characters, let's say, I don't know, 120 characters, uh, in which there is written what browser you use and what system you use and what version of the browser you use, not the screen things. And you can actually spoof the user agent, you can do it with uh, extensions again, or in Firefox you can do it manually. And what it does, it it's uh, it tells the server you visit, the website you visit, uh, what what browser you use. So if there is some some feature that let's say works very well in Google Chrome but doesn't work in Microsoft Edge, they can know that you are coming from Edge to show you the Edge supported version. Okay. But you can manually change the user agent so the site will think that you are coming from different system. You can choose some common user agents, so you look very common by the server. You can choose the Google Chrome, I don't know, 60 something version, and Windows 10 system, or you can uh, put there whatever information you want. Just a little info here. Some websites that are poorly programmed uh, rely only on a user agent to bug fix the system. What this means is that, uh, yeah, let's say that website loads very badly in Safari browser. Okay, so they check user agent of the people coming to the website, and if there if there is Safari written in the user agent they know that they need to make some modifications. So they uh, show you a special code that works fine. And if you spoof it, if you use Safari and pretend you are using Google Chrome, some minor websites can break. And it means they are poorly, poorly programmed. You can actually email them, hey, you shouldn't rely on user agent while debugging your stuff. Okay, um, yeah, Canvas. I want to talk about Canvas. Uh, HTML5, which is a standard of the code the websites are coded in, the structural code, 
um, there is a version of HTML which is HTML5. It's been around for ages and it's a standard. Every website you, you visit, I guarantee it's using HTML5. And HTML5 comes with a lot of features. One of them is Canvas, Canvas API. Uh, it's, uh, let's say it's a thing in your browser that can draw images in two or three dimensional play. Uh, yeah, you can do some pretty cool stuff. You can create uh, nice animated objects on the page or create some interactive websites with moving particles and acceleration. It's very good for doing some graphical stuff. And the trick here about browser fingerprinting is that if you take this uh, canvas object and you say okay browser make a new canvas object so let's say a rectangle and use a type mode and in the rectangle display a text let's say hi there I'm Adam make it color uh, red okay and use some text shadow and put a little background on it maybe okay so I tell the browser to create this image using this canvas system canvas module canvas API if you want and what it does it it creates this rectangle with all the graphical stuff you say it should do and a trick here is that the every computer might not display the same way okay because there is this thing called font rendering, you know, uh, you sure know about what I mean. Uh, if you look at article on your mother's computer and look at the same article on your phone, you know that the, that the typography is a little bit changed, it's a little bit grainy or crispy or stronger or bolder or lighter, whatever. And what this canvas fingerprinting method is, that it, it lets you create the canvas full of stuff with the font, color, background, shadow and some other elements maybe. So there's a lot of stuff that can differ across systems and it actually creates this image and then uses another JavaScript function to take this image and convert it into a hash. Hash is, uh, hashing is, uh, I don't want to go into detail, but it's a function or you, you take something, put it into the hashing algorithm and you get some output, some weird characters. And the thing is that uh, every input, everything you put inside, if it differs, it will, it will always make a different hash. So if I put Adam, I know that my hash will be one, two, three, something, whatever random gibberish. If I say Adam two, it will be different. It will always create, always create the same hash for the same string of the input, but if you change it, it will be different. So, back to Canvas. We get the Canvas image, we create it, and we use this hashing algorithm to convert it into this hash, and then store the hash in the database. And what is it good for? Well the server let's say the times.com knows that visitor coming from this specific computer might have been here already because we know that there's been a visitor with the same hash that this guy uses now there might be a lot of maybe tens of thousands of combinations of how different the canvas image might be but it's not like 100% unique, you know, because if I buy two same computers and install the same system, let's say company computers, I will get the same canvas because if I use it right after installation, you know, if we have the same fonts and stuff, we get the same canvas, so we have the same hash. But it's still a bit of uh, a bit of uniqueness is still there, you know. If if you have a standard Windows computer, use Chrome and use it for some time, maybe have some add-ons 
custom fonts and stuff and you visit a site it gets your fingerprint from the canvas and if you open an incognito or private mode you will produce the very same canvas because even though private modes don't use cookies or history or whatever it's still the same browser on the same computer using the same fonts in the same language so the canvas will be very same so the site that you are visiting without the incognito mode and in the incognito mode knows it's still you besides knowing it's the same IP address but if even if you would go to VPN it will still know it's you so what you can do about canvas fingerprinting you can actually turn off canvas also and you won't get you won't get some errors because canvas is really used for graphics you know so if you turn off canvas in your browser you might not see some nice graphics on the site but uh, considering it's a very modern thing uh, you're not losing that much because it's usually used to displace some weird animating particles on the back of the header of some weird websites using bootstrap whatever so that was canvas fingerprinting and what I have here next is yeah feature print yes uh, feature print let's say you use a very old computer uh, it has what it can Internet Explorer 8 Windows XP the first version and I don't know what else whatever just this in a contrary to iPhone 10 okay you have an iPhone 10 and this very old PC what I can do to have a some sense of fingerprinting or some uniqueness of your browser compared to the iPhone is that I can use I can detect what features your browser have and I can either code it myself and spend a lot of time with it or I can use JavaScript frameworks like modernizer which quickly uh, if I if I use the modernizer I can quickly use modernizer and some functions so let's say modernizer and CSS grid which is a new cool thing that cool kids use to create grid layouts on page I can get a result if the browser that I run it in uh, supports this feature or not and if I make a very very long list of requests like a 2000 I can get a nice preview of what your browser is capable of and what it's not capable of and if I use it on the Internet Explorer 8 in the old computer and iPhone 10 I know that half of the features of on the, of the iPhone won't be able to be supported on the IE so if I take the list of what are the stuff supported in each of the browsers and shrink it to some hash again I can say okay this browser supports 687 things and iPhone supports 2000 things that I, I tested it for therefore next time I see someone with 678 things supported it, it there is a chance it might be this guy now uh, because of the amount of things supported and because of standardization it's not that unique okay you can have I don't know a hundred million people having the same uniqueness of this modernizer uh, supported features but still it's some you lower it from complete random to some chunk and if you combine it with the canvas and a navigator object you, you get a, a little bit more of uniqueness you can get to the even the thousands of thousands yeah you can you can get the thousands of unique fingerprints so modernizer what you can do you can do about it is well not much you can turn off or on individual features in your browser or you can use uh, you can use Google Chrome on websites that you are suspicious about that might use this 
detection because Google Chrome is currently, sadly, the most popular browser. It gets, I don't know what is, 75% or 80% of the market share. So if you use the latest Chrome or the latest stable Chrome to fit in rightly, uh, you won't have that much of a unique fingerprint using the modernizer feature technique. Uh, next thing on my list, uh, yeah, social media logins. Now this is also funny and tricky and hacky. Uh, if you are a standard computer user and you use social media, you might you might currently be logged into, let's say Facebook, uh, Google, and I don't know what's on Instagram and. Vimeo, okay? These five networks you are currently logged in to. Uh, what I can do here is, on my side, I can test if you are logged to any of the services I want to check if you are logged in. Uh, this technique is very simple. I can go into my Facebook and upload an image, okay? And I can set the privacy so it's only visible to the people that are logged in. It's public on Facebook. Inside Facebook it's public, but it's not public on the internet. Okay, you need to be logged in to see the image I uploaded. And then I put the image on my website. And if you access the website, there are two things that can happen. It can you can see the image or you can get the error saying Please log in to Facebook to see this image of this guy. And I can hide the error and hide the image actually from, from you, from the visible part. And I can just track the response you get. So I have this image from Facebook. I put it invisibly on the website. You, you go to my website and I know immediately if you are logged into Facebook or not. And if he, I use this technique, with a hundred platforms that I suspect a lot of people might be using, let's say Twitter, uh, I don't know, Google+, whatever, uh, whatever popular website that uses cookies for a long time and people use it, I don't know, what's still around, Flickr, Uber, or I don't know, it doesn't have to be social media actually, it can be whatever that is popular. And if I test you, and you are locked into 12 of them, uh, you are different than the guy that's locked into three of them. And again, I can add this uniqueness into the other stuff we talked about. The canvas, the RTC leaks, navigator objects, user agent, IP address. Um, I can combine it cleverly, sm smartly, so I can use all of this to track you even if you use a different IP address but on the same computer uh, okay so this is social media uh, modules yeah modules and time zone yeah well time zone you get from the navigator object or user agent or IP but um, yeah what, what is it forget again modules yeah Modules are the things that are inside the browser and are not the extensions, but they're other stuff you usually might uh, come across. This means uh, that I can test using the modules if you have them. So I use some functions from the modules so I can test if your browser supports some features from Java applets, from Microsoft uh, Silverlight. Uh, what else could be flash? I don't know. It's deprecated, but yeah, I can test modules. I can I, there's a bunch of them. I can test how many of them are installed on your computer and add it to your unique fingerprint. And uh, one more thing I'm gonna talk about is fonts. Okay, so if you use your computer for some time already, maybe a year or something. There, are, there's a chance you installed some custom fonts, or because of the localization of the installation, or some other reason. There might be a 
different amount of fonts typography installed in your system than your neighbor has okay uh, I can have 8,000 fonts installed and your neighbor can have 8,075 and I can also add this to your fingerprint and chances are you won't change the amount of fonts installed on your system until tomorrow when you visit my site again so tomorrow I know it's you again even if you try to bypass somehow some of the tricking so I still might know it's you and yeah I think I covered most of what I wanted to talk about here yeah yes uh, back to the social social media logins you can you can actually uh, defend yourself here using your browser privacy setting to make it not accept third-party cookies this will this allow you to let's say click on the likes button on sites that are not Facebook but some articles for example you read a recipe online and there is a like button and if usually there is this profile picture of you if you're logged in on Facebook but here on the recipe site there is this profile picture of you this is a third-party cookie it's actually the site asking if you have a Facebook cookie you can block third-party cookies you will lose this functionality you will have to log in again on the site to like it but it's a very good enhancement of privacy or you can disallow cookies at all you can permanently use private mode or incognito mode to browse safely to eliminate a lot a lot of tracking and um, yeah so all of these seven or how many methods I told you about uh, reveal some informations about the system it won't tell you this is you but it combined together it can give the company a bit of uniqueness and this all was everything there is at the browser fingerprinting that is not a cookies okay you can have normal cookies or super cookies and cookies you've already you know what are cookies you, you see that every page I accept cookies so but very shortly cookies are very small files that the browser decided to store at your the, the company decided to store at your browser so they know you come again that it's you uh, if you use the incognito private mode it doesn't save cookies cookies can be set for unlimited time they can be kept forever until you delete them manually and super cookies are things that even if you delete cookies they are still persistent it could be local storage or session storage uh, these type of storages are part of HTML5 implementation again same as the canvas local storage is uh, I think it's 5 megabytes it differs across browsers but 5 megabytes is the safe limit here server can save up to 5 megabytes of information to your browser and access it on your next visit uh, you can actually manually dump local storage or you can you can uh, forbid it in your browser again it's very easy in Firefox in about config page to find a local storage and disable it or you can find online more information about it about uh, super cookies if you want to and short um, briefly they are just more persistent cookies that might be there even if you disable the regular cookies for you yeah so uh, that's about it that was some 30 minute uh, talk about a browser fingerprinting and uh, next time we will speak more about how yeah I'm gonna tell you how Google Analytics work how, how it works how, how ad, ad tracking actually works how they bypass cross-site 
request forgery policy and how it how it is invasing invading your privacy okay so that was it for this episode uh, if you want to get in touch with me or if you want to get my uh, cryptographic key or if you want to donate if that's your thing you can do it on the, this this site the top one is uh, rajnoha.com slash thanks dot txt and if for some reason it doesn't work because the web hosting got down or whatever there is a second source of the very same content that is just mirrored to GitLab and you can go to GitLab that uh, J S O U C N O slash thanks and you will read the same text I prepared for you as same contact information and you can also get my uh, public key to encrypt emails if you want to get in touch with me which I would be uh, very glad okay so that's it and see you next time